If you've ever been in an earthquake, you know exactly how scary it feels. And if you haven't been in an earthquake, but you live in one of these areas, then most likely you'll experience an earthquake in your lifetime. But what makes some buildings survive an earthquake and others not? One of the more common building failures is apartment buildings with parking garages underneath the living areas. Notice how the top of the building is significantly more rigid than the ground floor. This is what's called a weak story irregularity. The top floors basically squish the first floor. Another common failure occurs with buildings made of brick. Unreinforced bricks can detach from the structure and can fall on people below. Engineers have come up with some really creative ways to minimize damage to buildings during earthquakes. Some buildings are actually supported by rollers similar to this. This works on Newton's first law of motion, an object at rest tends to stay at rest. The rollers decouple the movement of the ground from the building. The building remains almost perfectly still. Today, many modern tall buildings are built with either a brace frame design or a moment frame design. Brace frames have cross members, whereas a moment frame relies on the connection between beams and columns. This is the actual ground motion data from a real-life earthquake. More specifically, it's from the 1994 Northridge earthquake by Los Angeles. This is the actual earthquake being simulated by my 3D printer. Let's see which model building can survive the Northridge earthquake. The moment frame design or the braced frame design? Let's start with the braced frame design. Now let's see how the moment frame handles the Northridge earthquake. In this specific situation, the moment frame is weaker, but this does not correlate to real life. Let's apply what we learned earlier to the moment frame design to see if we get it to survive the Northridge earthquake. The rollers greatly reduce the amount of ground acceleration on the building. Without the rollers, this design collapsed almost immediately, but with the rollers, it actually survived the ground motion. But what's the solution to bricks or unreinforced structures falling on people? The solution is reinforcing brick, masonry, or concrete structures with steel. Let's compare the strength and degree of failure between the unreinforced beam and the reinforced beam. Here I have solid tungsten. It's one of the most dense materials you could buy. Each cube weighs 2.2 pounds. The unreinforced concrete beam is brittle and completely fails. Now let's try the steel reinforced concrete beam. The steel reinforced beam is not only stronger, but it doesn't completely fail. It may look like the failure was the same at first, but when I pick it up, you can see the beam is actually ductile. It didn't completely snap and break. In real life, this means that a building may have cracks and some damage, but it won't completely fall on the people inside. And what's the solution to a weak story irregularity that we saw earlier, where the top of the building crushes the first floor? The solution is to never have a floor on the bottom of a building that is less rigid than the floors above it. Earthquakes can be scary or even dangerous at times. Just remember, stay away from unreinforced masonry buildings during an earthquake. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing. On this channel, I test out a lot of experiments and I explain different physics principles. Occasionally, I'll throw in a project that I think you'll find fun or interesting. Thanks for watching and I wish you the best on all of your projects and future endeavors.